I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my creative healing course is filled with hours of exclusive content. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're gonna to be talking about signs an avoidant misses you. Well, if you're learning about attachment styles and trying to figure out what avoidant partners are like, it can be really tricky to figure out if the avoidant person that you dated misses you, if they've been thinking about you, mm -hmm. and if they're going to come back and try and repair things with you. Not easy to understand. And we're going to talk about this today and why it can be so challenging. All right. So if you've gathered so far from what you've learned through this channel and what you've learned about attachment theory, that your ex might be avoidant themselves, you might be thinking to yourself, well, how will I ever know if they miss me or if they want to reconnect with me if they do have an issue with be, being emotionally vulnerable and being able to express how they feel? Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about some of the signs that they miss you, even though they might have an avoidant attachment style. Yeah. The thing that is so overwhelming, especially if you're going through a breakup, is feeling like they don't care about you, they moved on, they're not gonna think about you, but that's not true, is it, Margaret? Not at all, not at all. And we have certainly learned that by talking with the many people we talk with, that the person who is abandoned, who is left, who is broken up with, um, does think about you mm -hmm. and probably has taken a long time to make the decision to do the breakup and is probably at least ambivalent about it. Mm -hmm. Sure, because Ultimately, we are all hardwired to connect. Absolutely. Right? Avoidant or not. Yeah. That's right. And so they're going to feel it. Now, it may not be the way that you do or think about it as often as you do, but that doesn't mean they can stop those feelings and those intrusive thoughts for coming in and experiencing them themselves, but right? But an avoidant looks like they can, but cheer up, no, they can't. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they'll put a good wall up. Yeah. But you got to understand that if you really want to date somebody who is more avoidant, that they are going to do things that are a lot more subtle and indirect in trying to communicate with you. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to make bids to connect with you, but they're not going to be as big and maybe attention seeking as like somebody who's really anxious would act, right? Like in your mm -hmm. face. In your face. Yeah. 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 Pay attention to me. Maybe we should define bids a little bit. Well, a bid can be any kind of thing, behavior to connect with somebody, okay. right? You're making an effort to connect. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be a question. It could be a, a text message, a, a call. Yeah. 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 Anything to try and it's connect a with somebody. It's a little reach out. Exactly. Not always direct. But they tend to be smaller. Yeah from an avoidant. Right, and the reason for that is probably because when they were younger and when, when they were kids, they probably weren't listened to or given the, that emotional attention that they needed as a kid developmentally. Um, also, they could have been scolded or even punished for showing any kind of need or any type of emotional expression at all. There could also be a whole, you know, gender aspect to it where if they were male, they might have been shown that men have to be tough and can't express emotion. Mm -hmm. So there can be many different reasons as to why somebody with an avoidant attachment style might be less likely to express their emotion openly to you. Yep. So how do you know? What is a sign that they care about you? <laughs> so the first sign is that they might tell friends and family about you. Mm -hmm. So instead of going to you directly, like Craig was saying, most of the signs are going to be subtle, indirect. So a way to do that would be to go through a third party. 
Mm -hmm. So they might contact a mutual friend, maybe a family member of yours, maybe one of their family members that they know that you're connected with mm -hmm. to try to get a message across to you. Or maybe even on an unconscious level of just expressing you know, their feelings to that other person, thinking that it might not get back to you, but it does. Absolutely. Yeah, and if they do it to the right person, part of them knows it's going to get back. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. Another big one, and I, I really think this one is a game changer for avoidance, is social media. Mm -hmm. Right now, with so much social media, we have so many different ways mm -hmm. to see what somebody else right. is doing. And now they can do it and, and find out what's going on in your life without asking you. Without having to contact right? you. Yeah. So they're going to be watching your stories uh, to see what you're doing or if that you're okay. Um, and, you know, they're going to look, but they're probably not going to comment, mm. um, especially if they're, you know, confused or scared about mm -hmm. where the relationship is going. Um, another thing that they'll do is they might send you something like a little funny meme or a mm -hmm. picture, mm -hmm. something non-threatening, not very vulnerable, um, nothing too direct or emotionally charged, mm -hmm. right? They're not right. going to be like, I miss you, I think about you every day. Right. Oh, God, no. <laughs> why, why would I ever admit that? Yeah. So the small things like that. Mm -hmm. um, here's another one. On social media, you may find that if you're tagged in a post, mm. they may like the post mm -hmm. because you didn't post it. It was a third party. And so it's a sneaky way right. of showing I'm mm -hmm. still here. I'm still looking. Mm -hmm. They could also post something related to your interests or something that they know that you'll like, like maybe a concert that you guys went to or a band that you like or a certain hobby that you like. And a lot of people with more avoidant attachment styles tend to take the back seat as far as initiating connection and initiating that contact. Mm -hmm. So they might post something that would provoke you to reach out to them. Not saying that you should, we definitely hold the opinion that no contact is the best option if you're going through a breakup. Mm -hmm. However, be mindful that avoidants do take that back seat and do prefer others to reach out and do the emotional uh, labor of that connection. Yeah, like they they want you to be the one to reach out. Mm -hmm. They want you to be the one that sees that song that you still listen to together, mm -hmm. or they played it at your f friend's wedding or whatever it is. They want you to to provoke you, but don't do it. You really want them to be the one to to contact you about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not admitting I have any of those mushy feelings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Avoidant exes do reach out. Agree? Absolutely. Um, but they're just going to be more practical about it. Not overwhelming. You got to realize that it's not likely going to be something really emotional. Mm -hmm. It may be something like they want to do a favor for you. Like, hey, you know, I know I promised you before we broke up that I'd fix your cabinets. I'll stu still do that mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Right? Guys tend to do stuff right. like that. Yeah, yeah acts of service. Mm -hmm. yeah. They could offer to cook for you and make or clean something or help repair something. Uh, something like a favor, mm -hmm. but nothing like emotional like, hey, I'd love to talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd love to hang out with you with absolutely no questions and expectations. <laughs> exactly. That sounds about it. And even if you're in no contact, your ex might still do something to help you out in a practical way. They yeah. might refer you to uh, an employer or help you out in, in a way that's distanced from you. That's not a direct contact. That might be behind the scenes and you don't even know about. So that might be a way of showing that they miss you, they care about you, they want the best for you still. And of course they're thinking of you. Yeah. 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 It, it's like the indirect direct approach mm -hmm. that you've heard me talk about. You know... It's non-threatening. They have to reach out in some manner. It's often confusing, right? I, the one that's the most famous that I talk about is, uh, you know, how's the cat? I miss the cat. Right, that's and favorite. how many times have we heard it? It's so crazy yeah, that yeah. it really does come up all the time. Now everyone laughs. You say, how's your cat? And it's so true, though. It's like mm -hmm. so odd that it's always the cat. It's always the cat. Well, they purr so nicely. And they don't ask for anything either. And they're not overwhelming. No, they're right? true. <laughs> I miss that cat. They weren't overwhelming like you were. Yeah, that's right. Until they step on your keyboard. But... Yeah. 
<laughs> but, you know, when they use the indirect direct mm -hmm. approach, it's a bid to connect with you, mm -hmm. but it's not something that is going to overwhelm them. It's going to be more subtle and it's going to leave you confused. Mm -hmm. So you can't just dump all of your feelings and emotions on them. I finally heard from you. Heard from you. Here's a, how I've been feeling for the last three months in mm -hmm. great detail. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah. want to do that. Exactly. Exactly. Remember to take it easy. And you might have the tendency to want to share everything once you see any type of bit of, for connection from them. But remember to show that emotional self-control when, when you're around them or when you're talking to them or to any degree if they reach out to you. Um, you don't want to overwhelm them in this state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You really don't want to overwhelm. I'd say that's the biggest thing is to take things really slow. Slow is much mm -hmm. better in the situation like this. Always. But okay. avoidance will miss you. Mm -hmm. And the more that you understand the subtleties of an avoidant, the more you can understand how to navigate and decide if that's somebody that you want to be with. Because, like I said, avoidants often have a lot of great qualities. You can have a lot of fun together. Mm -hmm. It's just those expectations and feelings and commitments that can overwhelm them so much that they're like, abort, abort, gotta get out of here. Mm -hmm. Gotta get out of here, yeah. yeah. So um, just look for the subtle signs mm -hmm. and you'll often realize that there's more there, but I would say let them come to you. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you're not always gonna see a big flag or a big stamp on their forehead that says, I miss you. But just because you don't see these signs doesn't also mean that they might be missing you. Or that they didn't care or that they never cared, exactly. which is often how we feel. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So I think this was a helpful video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I have email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret is, of course, available for Skype coaching. If you feel that I could be helpful to you, please sign up. And Coach Victoria will continue to be in the videos and train with us. I'll be here. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.